ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶದಯಾಪಾತ್ರಂ ದೀಭಕ್ತಿಯಾದಿಗುಣಾರ್ಣವಂ ಯತೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣಂ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯಜಾತರ ಮುನಿ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥಯಾಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಅಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯಮೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯ ದೈಕಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜಸ್ಯ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯಾ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶದಯಾಪಾತ್ರೀಭಕ್ತಿಗುಣಾರ್ಣವಂ ಯತೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣಂ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯಜಾತರ ಮುನಿ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಮಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯಮೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯದೈಕಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜಸ್ಯ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯಾ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ we continue with the exposition of the daya prakarana and the first sutra is being explained at present so the <clears throat> most important characteristics every vaishnava is supposed to possess or any vaishnava who wishes to call himself a vaishnava is to possess he is ex- being explained in this context <clears throat> so i will recite the chornike ones and then continue with the explanation puram bundana pattukale adaya vasaneyode vidhayum emberumane tanjamenne pattuhayum pere tappalenne tudindirukkayum petukkatvarikkayum irukkum naal uhandarane nalangale pravananai ಗುಣಾನುಭವ ಕೈಂಕರ್ಯಂಗಡಿದೆ ಪೋದು ಪೋಕ್ಕಾಹಯಂ ಇಪ್ಪಡೀರಕ್ಕಂ ಶ್ರೀ ವೈಷ್ಣವರ್ ಹೃದಯತ್ತಬರಿಂದ ಹರಿಂದಿರಕ್ಕಯಂ ತಿರುಮಂತ್ರತ್ತಿನ ದ್ವೇತ್ತಿನ ನಿಯತನಾಹಯಂ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಪ್ರೇಮಂ ಘನತ್ತಿರಕ್ಕಯಂ ಆಚಾರ್ಯನ್ ಪಕ್ಕದಿನ ಎಂಬಿರುಮಾನ್ ಪಕ್ಕದಿನ ಕೃತಜ್ಞತಾಯ ಪೌರುಹಯಂ ಜ್ಞಾನಮಂ ವಿರಕ್ತಿಯಂ ಶಾಂತಿಯಂ ಉಡೇನಾಯಿರು ಇರುಕ್ಕಂ ಪರಮಸಾತ್ವಿಕನೋಡೇ ಸಹವಾಸಂಪನ್ನಹಯಂ ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಧಿಕಾರಿಕವಶ್ಯಾಪೇಕ್ಷಿತ ಸೊ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಗಾನ್ ಥ್ರೂ ದಿ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾರೆಕ್ಟರಿಸ್ಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟೀಸ್ ಶ್ರೀ ವೈಷ್ಣವ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಇಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಅಂಡರ್ಲೈನ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಧಿಕಾರಿಕಿ ಅವಶ್ಯಾಪೇಕ್ಷಿತ ಸೇಸ್ <clears throat> so we are studying this important characteristics aacharyan pakkarinum emberuman pakkarinum kritagnyanai porohayavadi nitya samsaryana tannai nitya sori halperum petuk arhanam padi irumbai irumbai ponnakkuare pole tirittina aacharyan pakkarinum ಅದ್ವೇಷಾದಿಗಳೇ ವಿಳೆತ್ತಿಕೊಂಡು ಬಂದು ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ವಿಷಯತ್ತೋಡೇ ಶೇರ್ತ ಎಂಬಿರುಮಾನ್ ಪಕ್ಕದಿನ ಉಪಕಾರ ಸ್ಮೃತಿಯುಡೇನಾಯ್ ಪೋರು ಹೈ ಸೊ ದಿ ಲಿಟ್ರಲ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಸೂತ್ರ ಐಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಸೂತ್ರ ಐಸ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯನ್ ಪಕ್ಕದಿನ ಎಂಬಿರುಮಾನ್ ಪಕ್ಕದಿನ ಕೃತಜ್ಞನಾಯ್ ಪೋರು ಹೈ ಸೊ ಹಿ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ he should have what is known as kritagnyata that means remembering the help rendered by somebody that is known as kritagnyata kritam janati iti kritagnya of course there are several words like gratitude etc of course gratitude is one one word but <clears throat> there are two 
mutually opposed words kritagnya and kritagna kritam hanti iti kritagna a person who renders something opposite to him opposite to a person who has helped him is known as kritagna kritagnya means kritam jana iti kritagnya a person who acknowledges the help done by somebody and also tries to pay back in the same kind that is he tries to also help him back when he is in need so that is known as kritagnyata of course in this context <laughs> the supreme lord does not expect anything in return the first thing is you have to acknowledge the help done by the acharya and also done by the supreme lord himself so how to do that why why should one be so grateful to the guru or acharya and why should he be very grateful to the supreme lord hmm? is the question so here it's a <laughs> little bit very controversial topic so there are some nitya samsariyana tannai நித்திய சூரிகள் பெறும் பேற்றுக்கு அருகனாம் படி இரும்பை பொன்னாக்குவாரை போலே திருத்தின ஆச்சாரியன் பக்கலிலும் சோ ஹி கிவ்ஸ் அ வெரி வெரி பியூட்டிஃபுல் அப்ஜெக்டிவ் டு ஆச்சாரியா வாட் இஸ் தட் சோ ஐ ஷுட் கன்சிடர் மை செல்ஃப் ஆஸ் அ நித்திய சம்சாரி வாட் இஸ் அ நித்திய சம்சாரி மீன் nitya samsari means a person who will who is eternally a bonded soul so whether a eternally bonded soul exists or not is a big 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 question <clears throat> so according to some this is a very big question as far as the vedanta shastra especially even in vishishta advaita vedanta it's concerned so one school of thought says there are some nitya samsaris and another school of thought says no it's not possible so nitya samsari means a person who is eternally in bondage he can never never be redeemed or granted liberation even by the supreme lord therefore some people are of the opinion that the categorization of the jeevatma or individual so souls should be slightly changed so as of now we said atma jeevatma trividha baddha mukta nitya mukta the existing categorization of jeevatma is those who are bonded those who are earlier bonded but liberated now and then who have been <coughs> never bonded at all they are ever ever liberated by kananta garuda vishak sena and others so these people who accept the existence of anitya samsari are eternal bonded so as far as the siddhanta view point is concerned also mentioned that just like you have nitya mukta you also have to have nitya baddha because you accept that there is a nitya samsari then when you have divided the mukta atmas into the two as mukta and nitya mukta then you have baddha atma also you categorize into two as baddha and nitya baddha it's quite what they are telling is quite quite natural but the problem is if you accept nitya samsara nitya samsari it leads to several problems because i will just tell this assuming that there is an nitya samsari for the time being let us assume that there is an eternally bonded soul so i may think that what if i am a bonded so eternally bonded soul if i belong to the category of eternally bonded so what will happen i will never actually 
engage in any sadhana or shtada or I never engage in any moksha paya. Because I may feel that I, I may, if what if I am the Nitya Samsari, there is no redemption for me. Even if I do Jnana Yoga, Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Prapakti, Aracharya, Agmana, anything. So the problem of accepting a Nitya Samsari is a Jeeva Atma may never engage in any moksha paya or any means of attaining liberation. If he gets the doubt that what if I, I am that Nitya Samsari, I belong to that class of Nitya Samsaris. This is one problem. Suppose you don't accept Nitya Samsari. If you say that all bonded souls will ultimately gain, enter the portals of moksha, they will get liberated in due course. Then what will happen? Then also the same problem arises. Since every person is entitled to moksha and there is no Nitya Samsari according to you. So I will, anyway, even if I don't engage in any sadhana or since all the liber- bonded souls are bound to attain liberation one day or the other, even I will enter the portals of moksha in one day or the, on one day or the other. So why I should engage in sadhana or in the means of liberation. Is it clear? It's a bit complicated, but is it clear? You can you can unmute yourself and tell me there is no problem. It's clear, Swam. Okay. Or anybody has a doubt, you can ask, there is no problem. In the you can interrupt, there is no problem. So this is one problem. So if you accept Nitya Samsari exists, then the problem is some uh, person like me or you or anybody may think since if I am if I were to belong to that Nitya Samsari category, even if I do Jnana Yoga, Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Prabhupada for 100 Janmas or 100 births, I will not get Moksha because I am destined to be a Nitya Samsari or eternal bonded soul. This is the problem if you accept it. If you don't accept Nitya Samsari, if you say all bonded souls are bound to get moksha, then the problem will be, so I will think anyway I am going to get moksha. Because the theory says that all bonded souls are at a, are entitled to have moksha one day even if they don't perform any sadhanas or any means. Then such a person may never engage in moksha at all. In any workshop, this is the problem. So it's a very, very, very tricky issue because it cannot be resolved very easily. How, what is the answer is a very big question. So we will, we will not go into that immediately. Let us see later, we will discuss. But the contention in the current issue is, the current context is, he says, Nitya Samsariyana. Nitya Samsariyana Tannai. So I should feel that I am a Nitya Samsari, that I am eternally bonded soul. So eternally, I am, I having been an eternally bonded soul have been given this opportunity to attain the Supreme Lord. But according to some, this is a mutually contradictory state. Because when you say Nitya Samsari, that means you are eternally bonded, you can never have moksha. Then, how is it that the God himself, he has created me as a Nitya Samsari? I will just give an ordinary example. If a person is born as a Man, male person, he he will be a male for his entire life. Of course, in America, you have the option to change that sort, I understand. So, that is not very about that. <laughs> According to nature, you will see. So, you know, a woman cannot become a man and man cannot become a woman. This is the law of nature. Today, science 
what it is doing is or it has been doing over the last 100 to 100 years is it is trying to manipulate the laws of nature which is resulting in disaster whether it is atom bombs or whatever nuclear uh, achievements or so many other things including computer science of course some good aspects are there but 90% of all scientific experiments are resulting in the disaster for the human race <laughs> Now let us not worry about that. That's a very big problem. So, if I am born as a male, I'll I'll remain a male for my lifetime. If I am born as a female, I I'll remain a female for my lifetime. That is the law of nature. Similarly, if I think I am an itya samsari, if I feel I may be an itya samsari, eternally bonded, so then how can I be granted moksha? That is why in the Bhagavad Vishyam, in the beginning, it is said, Nitya Samsariya, I pawn driver. So the Supreme Lord liberated Nambadvar, who was like a Nitya Samsari. That means the we can reconcile these two in this following, in the following manner, as far as I can see this. There might be some other sampradaya works or uh, statements by our Purvacharyas, which I am not very much aware of. That when the manner in which a Jeevatma is immersed in samsara is seen, it seems that this person can never be redeemed. So it seems that he is bound to be eternally bound. And he can never attain moksha because he is so much immersed in samsara. But the Supreme Lord's grace is so great, so wonderful, so beautiful, so exalted, that even a person who seems to be eternally bonded can get moksha. So here Nitya Samsari Aratanai means I should feel that I am like an Itya Samsari in the sense I am so much engrossed in this Samsara or material world that I can never be redeemed by anybody. So I have no chance of redemption. When the situation is so worse or worst, the grace of the Acharya and the grace of the Lord is so great that even an Itya Samsari can be changed. His status can be changed. And he can be made to grant, made to be granted liberation. So nitya samsariya natan nai nitya suri hedam nitya suri hedal perum petrik arhanam padi. So the acharya has converted a nitya samsari, an eternally bonded soul like me, to be able to enjoy the exalted or most. Uh, unsurpassed location of Paramapada, which is attained only by the Nitya Suris, like Ananta Garuda Vishwasana, etc. So I am going to, though I have, I seem to be an eternally bonded soul, I am going to attain the most exalted abode of the Supreme Lord, which is enjoyed and which is resided in by only the Nitya Suri, the current Garuda Vishak. So, uh, in a very ordinary <laughs> analogy, it's like you now the American president, he, is, he lives in a white house, in the White House, which is the best, probably <laughs> the most advanced place in, on the earth. And he uses an Air Force One plane, <laughs> which has so many facilities. You can sleep, you can uh, do whatever you want. It has the best bathrooms, best uh, uh, places, uh, best place to sleep, etc. Then uh, he has the best place to vacation, Camp David or something like that. I don't know. I just heard. <laughs> so you know best, you know better. So it is said that the American president is the most powerful man on earth. He can at will, at the stroke of a hand or something, pen or something like that, he can. He can change the destiny of any person. 
of course it's not true but it can if if he wishes he can change he can kill anybody or he can prevent anybody from being killed <laughs> etc so that way it is said he is the most powerful person like that i am actually able to attain the most if i am if a person i am in a small village in uh, melkote in india so if overnight i am taken to the white house and given all the facilities given to the american president what will i think i will be so happy i am supposed to be so happy <laughs> like that if a nitya samsari or eternally bonded person can overnight or very soon be granted the same abode or same <clears throat> amount of bliss that is enjoyed by the nitya souris like ananta garuda vishakshana what can be said let's say he gives a very beautiful example irum bai ponna kuare pole just like iron is converted into gold of course in rasa shastra in the indian tradition what we call as alchemy we my father was doing lot of work on alchemy indian alchemy and when we research the works available there it is mentioned 70 different methods of converting base metal to gold have been mentioned there <laughs> but <clears throat> so many it's not so easy so and there are many people who have tried this and have gone mad actually i have heard about that from my guru many people have tried to do it but why was it mentioned in the first place etc is a very very big background is there and lot of issues are involved there let us not worry about it now but there are techniques to convert base metal or something like iron into gold of course iron can never be converted to gold according to the modern technology but traditional indian technologies have proven methods to convert iron into gold and it can be done in a cottage industry that is the beauty of it that's what is mentioned in the works of rasa shastra but there also once again it is said that it can be done only if a person is the recipient of the grace of the acharya who is a siddha in that matter and he can do it only if he can if he has overcome all his desires for worldly pleasures <laughs> so if he wants to become rich to enjoy life and enjoy acquire property or acquire material prosperity he will not be able to do it that's what the text of rasa shastra specifically say then why it has been mentioned etc if he is not interested if it does not help material prosperity why was it mentioned in those works is a big question to which there is a wonderful answer which we will see later so irum bai ponna kuare pole tiruttina acharyan pakkalilum so the acharya actually redeems the jeevatma who is like a nitya samsari or who is as good as a nitya samsari and makes him eligible to enjoy the most exalted place in creation not in the world not in this material world but beyond the material world in creation so he redeems him so acharya is the 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 most important person <clears throat> so a person should have at most gratitude towards the acharya then acharyan pakkarino therefore he has to have at most bhakti or devotion towards the acharya then nemberuman pakkal then why should we be so why should we have so much of gratitude towards the supreme lord so so i mean what about me very beautifully explains he says advesha adi hadai vidaitte kondu vande acharya vishayathode sherta nemberuman pakkarino so the most important aspect is as i mentioned advesham abhimukhyam so first is you should not have aversion towards moksha which is known as advesha advesha means animosity or aversion aversion is a word which has a lighter connotation whereas Mm. it is the other word i just used no 
animosity. Animosity is what is meant by desha generally. It can be, it comes near to that meaning. So not only he should not have aversion, he should also not have any animosity. Or not only he should not have animosity, he should not also have aversion towards it. And second is abhimukhya. Because according to our sampradaya, moksha, which is the most exalted abode of the Supreme Lord, cannot be earned by one's efforts. It can be earned only by the grace of the Supreme Lord, which is also mentioned as Mirhetuka. Whether that is Ahetuka or Mirhetuka, that is another question that is not a variation about it now. But the two most important aspects that are essential from the point of view of the Jivatma or individual soul is Advesha and Abhimukhya. So Advesha and Abhimukhya, lack of animosity or lack of aversion towards moksha. Because we see several people who has aversion towards moksha. In a way, all of us have. In what sense? Every day we come, we undergo so many miseries. It might be on account of the family members or it might be on account of the boss or some colleague or something like that. Or some person who has borrowed money from us or who has lended money to us, who has given us some, who is associated with us in business or some other thing. Or some person who is having some litigation, a court case or something, called in a case in a court of law, etc. Or some different types of diseases, unless it's a very fatal disease. In spite of our in undergoing all these miseries, do we want to give up life or do we want to live more? We all want to live more. We don't want to leave this material well at all, according to me or as far as I am concerned. Only you may say, oh, when am I going to get rid of all these things, we will say. When we are severely affected by something, but as soon as that period, that small amount of time is over, do we actually feel that we want to leave this? That is why they say Smashana Vairagya and Prasad Vairagya in Sanskrit. So when a person passes away, so it's a very, very difficult situation. So the person, for example, even recently when my father passed away. So when the person is cremated, the body is reduced to ashes in no, no, no time. So we feel everybody is going to become become turn into ashes in in it's only a matter of time before it happens. So why do we struggle so hard in life for material things? Should we not give up everything and dedicate ourselves to God? Or even if we don't think we have to dedicate ourselves to God, we say, What is the meaning of life? There is no meaning in life. Because ultimately, everybody is to has to turn into ashes. That is what a person feels when he is in the cremation ground. Or when he actually collects, when the ashes have to be collected and they have to be merged in the water, etc. <laughs> but after one or two hours after this incident happens, once again we return to the material ways of life. So that Smashana Vairagya is so short lived. <laughs> or even many people, they may not feel that also, even when they are in the cremation ground. They will think, okay, these are all things happen, but we cannot give anything, give up anything in this world. So that type of Vairagya is not real Vairagya renunciation. Similarly, they say Prasavai prasava Rakya, that's a different thing. It is not universally applicable, but it is not variable. So, that type of Vairagya is not useful for us. 
So, Adveshadiyade kundu and Vidate kundu and the Achari Vishayeto de Sherte and Birman Patalilum. So, the Supreme Lord, what did he do? He has developed the instinct to have Advesha and Abhimukhya, lack of animosity, and also being favorably inclined. Abhimukhya means being favorably inclined towards Moksha. When these two happen, by the grace of God, Acharya Vishayat Tode Sherta Yambiruma. Who has disdained it that such a Jeevatma should be associated with such an Acharya? It is the Supreme Lord who has made disdained it or who has willed it that this person should be associated with this Acharya. This person should be associated with this Acharya. So it is the Acharya who liberates the soul, but it is the Supreme Lord who actually associates the individual soul with, the, with his Acharya. So indirectly it is the Supreme Lord only who makes this happen. Directly it is the Lord who it is Acharya who makes this happen. So that is why Pilatoka Acharya very succinctly and very beautifully puts it when he says, Acharya Labham Bhagavan Ale, Bhagavan Labham Acharya Ale. Both the statements are mentioned side to side. One gets a befitting Acharya or a Varti Acharya because of the grace of the Lord. And one gets to attain the Supreme Lord because of the grace of the Acharya. So these two are mutually complementary. So one gets Acharya Labham Bhagavan Ale, Bhagavan Labham Acharya Ale. But there is one in today's context we have to underline a person who has had the Sakshatkara of the Supreme Lord. Such a person is real Acharya. But the question is, have the do the Acharyas who have given us the Panchasamskara or Samashinam, have they had Sakshatkara? That is the question. It's a very difficult question with the people who give discourses generally they will not raise. <laughs> because it's a very difficult question to answer. So my father used to answer it very, very beautifully when he said, yes, we Acharyas, we, we, we who are in the place of the Acharyas or who are doing the work of the Acharya, we have realized that we have not had the Sakshatkara of the Supreme Lord, but we don't do it individually, we do it as the representative of Ramanuja Acharya. Who was a realized soul, we have no doubt about that. <laughs> because in the Sharanagati Gatya, he has an what is that uh, real time dialogue with the Supreme Lord? <laughs> it's a real time dialogue because he converses directly with the Supreme Lord Ranganath. That's why he says, Samvada Yeshi Sharanagati Mantra Sadha. He, he asks a question, he is answered in real time. He asks a question, he is answered in real time. In Sharanagati Gadya and Sharanga Gadya, we see that. And as a result of Sharanagati, what happened to him? He had the divine vision of Vaikuntha itself from here. Due to which he has wonderfully described Vaikuntha in so much detail. So he says, Bhagavantam Jhana Yogena Drishtva. So in a mode of divine ecstasy, he has got the vision of Vaikuntha itself, which is the result of Sharanagati. So, my father used to say, we are representative of, uh, representative, we are representing Rama and Acharya when we initiate two people. So, we don't say, I am, that is why we all say Rama and Dasa. Though we are the Dasa of the present Acharya who is initiating us, ultimately, through this Acharya, ultimately, we are all Rama and Dasas because we are claiming moksha. Due to our being 
subservientu Ramanuja Acharya. That is why all the Shri Vaishnavas, whether it is this Sampradaya or that Sampradaya, everybody says, Adiyen, Dasa Ramanuja Dasa. And Swami Shri Kurat Tadwan, who was the direct disciple of Ramanuja Acharya, he says, in his Panchastava, he very beautifully establishes the connection to the Supreme Lord. That is very, very beautiful. So generally, suppose I have to approach Joe Biden today. <laughs> so I will try to establish some contact with him. I will say, ah, sir, I was working with your son as his colleague 10 years back. Or I was working with your wife as her subordinate 10 years back. I know you very well, so I am quite close to you in that way, we will say. Or a person who wants to establish a contact with Joe Biden will say right. He will try to establish some sort of connection. Sir, do you don't, don't you know me? I was working with your son for 10 years in this company. I will say. Ah, the such a person will say. Similarly, Kurat Tarnan was the direct disciple of Ramanuja Acharya. He says, Rama Nujan Krisharanos Mikulapradipaha Asitsa Yamuna Munehe Satanatha Vamshyaha Vamshyaf Paran Kushamunehe Sacha Sopi Devya Dasaha Taveti Paradas Mitadekshani Yaha. So in the Vardhradhistava, he very beautifully says in the end, O oh great Lord, I am the servant of Ramam Jacharya. I have taken refuge in the feet of Ramam Jacharya. Rama Anuja Angri Sharana Osmi Kulapradipa. This is my greatest qualification to attain moksha. How? Because I have taken refuge in the feet of the great, great, greatest Raman Jacharya. Who is Raman Jacharya? Asi Itsai Amuna He is the direct disciple of Yamuna Acharya, who was once again one of the greatest devotees and realized so. Who is Yamuna Acharya? He is the great, direct grandson of the Natha Muni, who once again was a great realization, who had the Sakshat Kara of the Supreme Lord. Who is Natha Muni? He is the Vamshyaf Paran Kushamune. He is born in the lineage of the Malva, who was the greatest of the realizations, who had had the vision of the Supreme Lord like no, like no one ever had. Or no one is ever going to have. He says, Vamshya Paran Kushamuni. Of course, Yamunacharya was the physical grandson of Nathamuni. And Nathamuni was not physically related to his Namalva, but still he says, Vamshya. That is why in Apostamba Dharma Sutra it says, Vamsho Dvija Vidya Janmanacha. So the lineage need not be due to the genealogical tradition only. It not be it need not be based on physical genes. It can be based on the transfer of knowledge also, divine knowledge, not some knowledge of some engineering or medical or some field like that. So he says, Atamuni was directly the he belonged to the lineage of Namalva or Paran Kusha. And who was Namalva? He was directly initiated by Vishwaksena. Who was directly initiated by Goddess Lakshmi? Who is your very consort? Who is very part of you? See how I am so closely related to you. So you have to grant me moksha. You have to always provide me, make me a recipient of your divine. Grace. So he says, Dasas Taveti Varadasmi Tavekshani. So that is the most important aspect, that is the connection between us and the Supreme Lord. So my father used to stress that this Acharya he is doing nothing but 
establishing the connection between you and Ramananda Acharya. From there, the connection is well established. So that is why in uh, the in Tamil Nadu, where my father had a lot of devotee relative uh, disciples whom he initiated, they will not say Samashrayanam or something like that. So they will they used to approach my father and say, please perform Samashrayanam. They would not say, they would say, Trivedi Sambandam Pandana. Please do the act or the, please perform the act of associating the feet of Ramanjacharya with me. So they will say, Thiruvadi Sammanda. Thiruvadi means divine feet. Sammanda means relation. So please perform the act of relating me with the divine feet of Ramanjacharya. They, they, they don't know or they will not use the word Samashina, but they will say Thiruvadi Sammanda. Which is a very, very, very significant word. So who actually makes this happen? Vlet kundu and the achari vishet tode shet the emberuman takkalinum. So this is the most, most exalted help that can be rendered to a person that is facilitating him to attain moksha. So suppose somebody gives me one million dollars or one billion dollars or one trillion dollars. As what we call in India as excretia. Is that a big help? I, th- I will say no. Because I have seen many people, yesterday I was reading in the news, <clears throat> one person who has, who earned 5 crores of rupees, that is 50 million rupees on a single day in a game show, in a TV show, in a TV game show. Today he is virtually on the streets selling coffee on the footpath. Five years back, overnight he earned 50 million rupees. But today he is on the footpath. He said, what happened? No, I started drinking, I started smoking, I was given to all vices once I got the money. And I have squandered all the money today. <laughs> and today I am struggling for to make a living. That's what he has said. So is that, was that money good for him or was it bad? It was bad for him. Or many a times I keep reading in news, people, young person, a young person who got, who got rich overnight, he purchased a Ferrari car, which cost some 30 million rupees. And he drove so fast on the highway after drinking <laughs> that he crashed the <coughs> car to a tree and he lost his life. So can we consider a person who has given so much of money as a person who has rendered great service? Of course, that doesn't mean that you should disrespect the person who has helped you. <clears throat> that is why in Sanskrit it is very beautifully mentioned in the Subhashita. Shanaish Panthaha, Shanaish Kanthaha, Shanair Vidya, Shanair Dhanam. <clears throat> so, when you have to walk a long distance of about 100 kilometers, let us say, or 100 miles, you cannot do it in one day. <laughs> First day you walk for four miles, then five miles, then four miles, five miles, like that. Gradually over a period of time only it should happen and it can happen. Similarly, Shanei Kantha. So suppose I there is a small tear, this dhoti becomes stored in one place. And I continue to wear it. In the same place it will go on tearing more and more and more and more. It is known as Shanai Kantha. Similarly, the process of education, it has to happen and it will happen only a period of time, over a period of time. So you cannot say today I started and tomorrow I became a great scholar. No, it cannot happen that way. 
it is a process of 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, 60, 70, 80, and over several births also. Because Lord Krishna says, Aneka Janma Samsiddha Tato Yati Parandam. Even the knowledge of Shastras or any matter, any field for that matter, even the, the person has to become an expert in science. He will become a great scientist, probably like Einstein or somebody. Or Einstein did not become a great scientist overnight. Or Newton or whoever it is. So it happens over a period of time. Similarly, Shanair Dhanam. If a person becomes rich overnight, he will not know how to handle it. How to handle that money. So it has to happen over a period of time only. So this is how it is mentioned. Anyway, so Adveshadi Hedai Vilek Tekkundu Vandu Acharya Vishet Tode Sherta Emberumam Takkarinum Upakara Smurthiyai Udayanai Poruhai So he, it is a very beautiful shloka is also given in this context. Atmano Hyati Nichasya Yogi Dhyaya Padarhatam Kripayayiva upakartaram macharyam samsparet sada. This atma is ati nicha. This jiva atma is of a very, very inferior quality. Though this atma <coughs> is of such an inferior quality, the acharya, he, facilitate, he facilitates this jiva atma to attain moksha, which is yogi dhyaya padarhatam. He facilitates <coughs> the most inferior Jiva Atma to attain the Pada or the place, exalted location, which is Yogi Dhyaya, which can be only meditated upon even by yogis. How? Why does the Acharya do it? Kripaya Eva Upakarta. He does it purely out of compassion and does not expect anything in return. That is why in the <coughs> works of Sanskrit, we see Yehakalo Bhagavan Paramakar Unikaha Bhagavan Jaimini Paramakar Unikaha Bhagavan Vyasaha, etc. Why? Why do, say, why do they say the most compassionate Rishi Bhagavan Jaimini or Vyasa? Because that compassion is not on account of their having any physical or any other type of association with us. It is purely out of compassion. And that compassion is not on account of any material cause. That is why they say it is nirhetuka kripa. Kripa eva upakar. The, the compassion arises due to their greatness. Greatness in the sense, my Acharya used to very beautifully say, in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Daya bhute shvalo ruktam mardavam hri rachapanam when he actually enumerates the qualities of a person having daivi sampad. He says, Daya bhute shu bhuta daya Compassion towards all beings who are undergoing some sort of misery. So all of us are undergoing misery, though we don't realize it outwardly or inwardly also. So the Acharya facilitates this Jivatma, who is of a very, very inferior or the most inferior nature to attain the most exalted abode or supreme place, which is purely on account of his causeless mercy or compassion. Kripayeva upakartara mahacharyam samsmaret sada sada samsmaret. Always he should be thinking about the supreme grace of the acharya which has facilitated him to in due course attain the most exalted place of creation. So, acharyam pakkalinam embiruman pakkalinam kritagnyanai poruhayam. You can have only kritagnyata that's all. You should not think that I will repay what he has done to me because in the 
ന്യാസ തിലക്ക ന്യാസ ദശക ന്യാസ തിലക്ക ആയിരുന്നുണ്ട് സ്വാമി വേദാന്ത ദേശിക സബോഡ്യ ആചാര്യ ഐസേസ് ആചാര്യ സദ്ധി അപ്രത്യുപകരണധിയ ദേവമത്സ്യാദുപാസ ഓ ദി ആചാര്യ ഫേവർഡ് മീ സോ ഗ്രേറ്റ്ലി ഐ വിൽ ട്രൈ ടു റീപേ ഹിസ് ഗ്രേസ് ഇൻ വൺ വേ ആർ ദി അതർ ഇഫ് ഐ തിങ്ക് ലൈക്ക് ദ ഐ എം എ ഫൂഡ് because the debt of the acharya can never be repaid back because it is such a great debt you can only always do what is called as anusandhana constant remembrance of the divine grace of the acharya that is the greatest thing you can offer in return nothing more than that the same applies to the supreme lord also so you should not think oh the god has graced me with this so i will do something in return to him you cannot do anything in return to him. or whatever you do in return it is not enough to bridge the gap between what he has done to you and what you can do to do for him and he is not interested in that also <laughs> that is the difference of a person who is a friend in this world and supreme lord or acharya because suppose i help somebody tomorrow i have some problem i will expect that person to re help me or return the favor as we call it so in uh, political terms they call it as quid quid pro quo or something like that <laughs> so there should not be any quid pro quo or quid quo pro or whatever it is <laughs> are you familiar with that word quid pro quo it means latin for uh, it's latin for this for that yes <laughs> Yes. So that is why it says Acharyam Samsmaretada. So this is the essence of the Acharyam Pakkalinam Yambirumam Pakkalinam Kritagnyanai Poruhayum. Swami, we can still do it with the aim of pleasing the Acharya, pleasing the Lord. Of course. Of course. <laughs> to please Him you can do anything but you should not do it with any with the mindset that you are trying to repay the yeah uh, or uh, render something back to him in in return to what he has done for you yes. so any any questions kashura has ji So may I think uh, you were mentioning about uh, nitya samsara is the idea the concept of nitya samsara and uh, m- my recollection is only uh, madhva dvaita vedantins there they are the ones who are uh, putting forward this idea in a very strong way okay um but uh, my question about nitya samsara would be that uh, if if everything is if everything is the property of the lord if the lord created everything mm-hmm. and he you know in vedanta we understand he is the source of everything so then everything belongs to him everything is controlled by him and everything is supported by him so then how is it then everything must have a relationship to him so whether whether that thing is in it, 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 whether he puts that thing in samsara or not <laughs> it doesn't really make any difference he can as you say even if there's an itch some sorry again the lord can change his mind and he can use that that uh, that jivatman as a servant in vaikuntha yeah the, the, the problem the problem is then you how do you label him as an itch some sorry <laughs> yeah you can't yeah so the verdict it's a very very deep question it's not so easily understandable from a very logical point of view my acharya used to say this so ultimately the concept of nitya samsara is not correct in the sense it is correct in the sense that this jivatma has committed innumerable sins so there is no chance that he can be redeemed because it is said so it is a very beautiful statement which my father used to quote often he used to say यद् ब्रह्मकल्पनीयतानुभवेप्यनाश्यम तत्किल विषम सृजति जंतुरिह क्षणार्धे वेरी ब्यूटीफुल स्टेटमेंट ही यूज्ड टू कोट मेनी टाइम्स 
so when i when i am born for example i am born in this having taken this body so i engage in so many transactions so each of my transactions or each of my what we call vyavaharas they may they may result in something bad for somebody and something good for somebody suppose a person is there so his wife asks him to do something and his mother asks him to do the opposite what should he do these are all very very tricky questions or suppose he has two children so his one son will say you do like this and another son will say you do, you do the opposite so if he listens to his wife then his mother will get angry and she will say always he is listening to his wife he doesn't care for me who has given birth to him and brought him up if he listens to his mother and he doesn't obey his wife he will say see i have given up all my belonging in the sense it is in the indian context you can keep it so i have given up my father's and my parents place and i have come to live with, live with him and i have him as my soul refuge so even then he doesn't care for me he still continues to listen to his mother and do as per his as per her orders so he will be hurting his mother and hurting his wife directly or indirectly either way so this is one situation like this we have hundreds of situations every day and knowingly or unknowingly for example when we walk on the street we may stamp on some put our feet on some uh, insect or something that we may do knowingly we do something unknowingly we do something so it says yat kilbe yat brahma kalpaniyata anubhave anubhave pyanash brahma kalpa means it it runs into several millions or billions of years so this person or this jantu who he has shanard the half a moment he will uh, acquire so much of karma that cannot be um, repaid or uh, undone even if he undergoes the fruits for one brahma kalpa or billions of years that's why it says na abuktam khiyate karma avashyam anubhoktavyam kritam karma shubhashubham न अभुक्त खीयते कर्म कल्पकोटिशते इवन हंड्रेड क्रोर्स ऑफ कल्पस दट मीन बिलियन ट्रिलियन सर क्वाड्रोपलियन पेंटोपलियन आई डोट नो मीन फर्दर नंबर ऑफ इयर्स आर कंप्लीटेड दि कर्म ऑफ ए जीवात्मा कैन नेवर बी कंप्लीटेड बिकॉज कंटिन्यूअसली गोज ऑन एंड ऑन एंड ऑन एंड ऑन अक्वेरी दि कर्मस from this point of view he is a nitya samsa but then by the grace of the acharya and by the grace of god when he comes to the acharya when he comes to god he performs gyan yoga karma yoga bhakti yoga etc and he acquires this akshat karma then it says taradhigame uttara purva bhayo ashlesha vinasha so when he acquires the knowledge of the supreme lord then all the karmas they will just the uh, the power of the vision of the supreme lord can reduce all karma to ashes in no time but from the point of view of the science of creation srishti vigyana with my acharya used to stress upon ultimately one day all the jivatmas have to merge into the brahman that is sadeva saumyera magrasit so laya happens in the brahman and there will be only one as it was before the process of creation then of course all of us will once again merge into the brahman merge means once again we should not 
कंफ्यूज आवर सेल्फ विद द कांसेप्ट ऑफ अद्वैत विशिष्ट अद्वैत लेट अस नॉट गो टू दैट डाइमेंशन नाउ देन आई सेड ओके देन आई आस्क माय गुरु देन व्हाई शुड वी नाउ डू ऑल दिस थिंग्स वन डे वन डे आर द अदर ऑल ऑफ अस आर गोइंग टू बिकम वन विद द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड देन व्हाई वी शुड डू ऑल या ऑफ कोर्स इफ यू आर रेडी टू हैव वन मिलियन मोर जन्मस इट मे हैपन आफ्टर सम 10 बिलियन इयर्स और 10 ट्रिलियन इयर्स Until then, if you are ready to being born again and again and again, you don't care for that. You need not engage. But if you want to overcome the birth, uh, some uh, this chakra of birth and death, then you have to do. Then you have to engage in some. If you are happy like that only, of course, all people, ninety-nine percent of the people, they are not interested in any sadhana. Then you need not do anything. You are free. That's what people are doing. That they, they don't. Care about being born again and again. They will say it is better if I am born again and again and again. Then only I can enjoy. So, um, so that's why one of the great acharyas says, "Vidu sho bi swara sikha samsara amko." When we enjoy the things of life, even a jnani who has had the the sakshatkara of the supreme lord, he will say, even he doesn't want to give up this world so easy. <laughs> And my guru used to say, unless a person becomes so old that he cannot do anything, if a person can still have some enjoyment, he will definitely not want to give up the body. Since God forcibly thrusts death on human beings, they die. Otherwise, they will never want to die. Unless a person is totally renounced towards this world, and I feel I realize that it is totally true. So Swami um I I have one question uh before you go um somebody sent me by email and he said that he, he got in touch with you by email but he's asking this question about uh it's a godi of Vaishnava and he's asking this question about uh, that he has heard that Manavala Mahamuni has uh has said that there is inherent in the jivatman there is uh, preeti or prema or bhakti these these things are are aspects or qualities inherent in a chetana in a jivatman or not he wants to know whether this is the this is this this is the understanding of shri vaishnavas in general or only manavala mamuni or or uh, no, i would like to see the context in which it is mentioned because i find i would not like to give answer So you please ask him to send the context in which he has mentioned. Mentioned. I will also see the exact wordings that are there. Then I will give the answer. Because it will not be incorrect. It will be incorrect of me to give an offhand answer and give a uh, incorrect reply. So let him send the uh, exact uh, wordings that are used by Manavar Mamni. Then I will also yeah. study the context and I will give. Can can I say that uh, I looked at uh, Yatindra Mani Dipika and some other texts and things? I'm not sure where he's getting this uh, from. Uh, yeah, but, but let him, but, let him uh, give the reference because unless we have the authentic reference, we cannot give. Yeah. We cannot comment on it. But but it my Dipika, I don't. No know. no, that's I don't. That, that's a different thing. That's a different thing, of course. Yatindra Mani Dipika talks about Dharma Bhuta Gyana, and that that uh, that Bhakti is a. Maybe a maybe a type of knowledge, a type of dharma, buddha, jnana. Is it? Fine. That is from the logical point of view. So, if what is bhakti? Is it how how does it belong to the jivatma? So, they may say dharma, buddha, jnana, vishesha, or something like that. It's a special type of dharma, buddha, jnana, or something like that. That's a different uh, perspective altogether. Whether bhakti is inherent to the jivatma, is it permanent? It's a permanent quality of the jivatma, not. That is the question raised by you, I think. That can yes. be answered when I see the context and also when I see right, the wording. Right. So what is what is trying to work out is with the, we have the Bada Jiva and is covered by Maya and Agyana Avidya, and uh, but is it just a matter of cleaning that away, and the the bhakti is there, or does the bhakti have to come from outside in some way? No, even we accept that Swarupa Avirbhava is moksha. Because the 
ಚಾಂದೋಗ್ಯೋಪನಿಷತ್ ಸ್ಪೆಸಿಫಿಕಲಿ ಸೇಸ್ ಏಷ ಸಂಪ್ರಸಾದ ತಸ್ಮತ್ ಶರೀರಾತ್ ಸಮುತ್ಥಾಯ ಪರಂಜ್ಯೋತಿರುಪಸಂಪದ್ಯ ಸ್ವೇನ ರೂಪೇಣ ಅಭಿನಿಷ್ಪದ್ಯತೆ ಸೊ ದಿ ಒರಿಜಿನಲ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಜೀವಾತ್ಮ ಇಸ್ ಜ್ಞಾನಾನಂದ ಸ್ವರೂಪ ಸೊ ಡ್ಯೂ ಟು ದಿ ಇನ್ಫ್ಲೂಯೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕರ್ಮಾಸ್ ದಿ ಜ್ಞಾನಾನಂದ ಸ್ವರೂಪ ಇಸ್ ಕನ್ಸೀಲ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವೆನ್ ದಿ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ರಿಮೂವ್ಡ್ automatically it will happen so that is why when bishibasham ramanandya acharya says when you people advise him say that avidya nivartireva moksha the undoing of avidya is moksha we accept it but that is taking away the negative aspect something positive was also there not only avidya nivarti but what happens positively that is the question now we are influenced by avidya or maya is true we accept because lord krishna himself says daivi kesha mamamayi guna maya do mamamaya duratya guna mayi mamamaya duratya mamiva ye prapadyante maya meva so that is true but is it only avidya nivartya doing away of avidya or is there something positive that's why ramanandya acharya says yaduktam avidya nivartire moksha it tadangi kriya we accept that avidyani vyakti is moksha but is a, that is only half the story or half the uh, matter that is covered something positive also occurs we have to mention that also so so we can't say that that uh, original ananda swarupa of the jivatman includes bhakti or not we can't say you can say that you can say that logically you can say because of course this jivatma is nothing but a part of the parmatma it is amsha amsho nana vipadesha bhavaiva amsho jeeva dokhe jeeva bhuta sama so the part also is of chaitanya has chaitanya which is always attracted towards the supreme towards the whole of which it is a part from that point of view you can say it, it is inherent so jnana ananda etc are inherent to the jivatma yes you can from that point of view you can say it is inherent but i would like to see the wordings what has been used in the words but it is true that so that's why it is said hiranmayena patrena satyasya pitamukha the jnana and the swarupa are the the so dharma bhuta jnana becomes vibhu or all pervasive in moksha according to shishta dvaita philosophy now what has happened now it's like the flame of the lamp on which there is a covering so the dharma bhuta jnana of people like us bonded soul sees it only it can goes only so far but when it is taken off it it lights the entire room that means it pervades the entire place so we accept it so the jnana and the swarupa which is concealed becomes manifest once again so another thing that i was thinking was because the supreme lord actually pervades everything he also pervades the atman so yes. in that in that sense also the atman cannot be lacking in anything because the supreme lord is permeating him from within yes yes yes, yes. but is there is a difference between the uh, deshika sampradaya and the and the <laughs> <laughs> on this uh, co pervasion and and in, internal pervasion and co pervasion yes there is the contradiction called it's called antarvyapti bahirvyapti vichara it's a big topic we will discuss it some other day <laughs> very interesting very very interesting but uh, we will discuss it some other day <laughs> so antarvyapti ಅಂತರ್ವ್ಯಾಪ್ತಿ ಆರ್ ಬಹಿರ್ವ್ಯಾಪ್ತಿ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿ ಡಿಸ್ಕಷನ್ ಸೊ 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 ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಟು ದಟ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ಸ್ ओरिजिनल ಕ್ವೆಶ್ಚನ್ देयर ಮೇ ಬಿ ಅ ಡಿಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ದ ದಿ ಸ್ಲೈಟ್ ಡಿಫರೆನ್ಸ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ದೇಶಿಕ ಸಂಪ್ರದಾಯ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಚೆನಚಾರ್ಯ ಸಂಪ್ರದಾಯ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಫ್ ನೋ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ನೋ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಸೀ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಐ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಆನ್ಸರ್ ಆಫ್ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ನಾಟ್ ಫೆಮಿಲಿಯರ್ ವಿತ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದೇ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ಡ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಆರ್ देयर ಸೊ ಐ ವುಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ಸೀ ದಿ exact wordings are the context and the what we call the exact saying so that i can but uh, your knowledge is so vast that you can uh, understand everything 
are uh, at least know all the issues that are in your anyway. <laughs> so thank you very much. Any other question is there from anybody else? So we'll complete. अचेद्रमाजेत्यशाचतुराचतुरक्षरी